Hey guys, I just realized like two seconds ago that I didn't actually make the event um, post in the group this week, so I'm not sure if you guys realized that I was doing one, though I do them every week at this time, but regardless, sorry for not getting that up sooner, um, and if that made you think that I wasn't going to do one this week. But as always, if you have questions, you can post them in the group or email me, and usually I address them at the time, and then I kind of do a video recap when the uh, Q&A happens, so if you miss it in real time, no big deal there. Um, I also just realized that there is a 12 minute range in the um, clocks at my house, so I'm pretty sure that this is like exactly three o'clock for me, but it could be 312, I'm not positive. Um, but regardless, I had some really good questions that came in this week. We only have about three to cover, but they're really good ones that I think are gonna be relatable to a lot of people. So the first one um, came from a client who I started working with relatively recently and she was talking about how so a little bit of backstory is when we first started working together she was feeling very overwhelmed with how to even get started that she is a uh, homeschooling mom she's in school full-time she's married she's very actively involved in her uh, church and her community and just really feeling like she knew she needed to make a change but didn't even know how to begin so um, part of what we've been working on is spending some time to um, just kind of brain dump and take a look at what her week is going to look like and finding little pockets of time to be prepared. So that being said, that gives you a little bit of a starting point for where this question is coming from. Um, and that is that she said she has a plan for the day and that she's been making overnight oats for breakfast. So those are prepared. She's been doing a good job eating those. She's been um, making healthy lunches to bring with her, especially when she's out and about with the kids and doing things, and when they're at places that have, you know, kind of kid-friendly food of like chicken fingers and fries and stuff like that, she's packing a lunch and she's eating that instead. Um, and that she's even either having healthy din dinners ready at the house, or she is packing something to bring with her if they have an evening activity, like they're, you know, doing something at the church or something like that. Um, but she's been noticing that more often than not, she, you know, she has this plan, she sticks to it really well through lunch, and then around dinner, she kind of ultimately finds herself making a different choice. That sometimes it's so extreme that, extreme's not a great word, but um, it's so maybe pronounced that she'll be waiting for her prepared meal to heat up and then next thing she knows she's eating something else um, and I just think that this is so relatable because we have all been in a situation where you have like the best intentions and then it's almost like you black out and you're like did I just like, eat what I think I did like I didn't mean to where you know what happened where did that come from um, so her question, that was a very long-winded of me, winded way of me getting to the question, is how can she finish the day as well as she started it? So this is a great question and I have a lot of things to address um, about it. And the first thing I want to do is highlight the good in this scenario. So like I mentioned, I gave you a little bit of the backstory here. Um, so the fact that she's even taking time to prep these foods is a major accomplishment. That's not something that was happening three weeks ago. Um, additionally, she's saying yes to her healthy meals early in the day, even when there are temptations around. She could easily decide, you know what, we're at the water park, I'm just gonna eat what the kids eat, forget my salad and my apple. But she's not, she's choosing those, um, she's choosing to eat the meals that she's bringing, so that's great. Um, and then additionally, she's preparing and being, um, being on top of things for dinner as well. So almost like put aside the fact that the actual eating of the dinners is still a work in progress, but she's prepared for what the day has in store for her. And that's a huge step. So I always wanna make sure that we highlight the good in the situation. And I wanna make sure that that's something that you guys do. Um, I'm just noticing that I'm like very backlit. I'm seeing if that makes any, this makes any difference a little bit, I guess. Um, I always want to make sure that you're highlighting the good in the situation, that you're giving yourself credit for the progress that you made or the steps that you've taken, and you're not just feeling like if things didn't go exactly according to plan, like you failed, because you haven't. You have made a lot of steps in the right direction. So I want to highlight that first. Um, 
I also want to note that when we're in the process of building new habits, that's when those habits are the most vulnerable. So habits take time to build. Um, and initially when you are building a new habit, it does take some willpower right off the bat to kind of power through those challenging circumstances before the habit has been cemented. So think about you know how long you've been doing what you normally do. So to continue with uh, the example of this client, for the last months, if not years, she's been you know going to church and just eating whatever food was there. So that habit of just you know kind of going with the flow is deeply rooted. So you need to cut yourself some slack when you're building these new habits that you know you're you're up against a tough uh, situation that building this new habit to replace the the old one is not an easy feat and part of what you need when you're building habits is just time and practice so part of um, you know being more successful throughout the day and making sure to end on a good note with the dinners part of that is just going to come with time and practice and as you know as her brain and your brains learn like this is what we do now in this situation you know what I mean um, so part of the answer here is just kind of continuing to do what you're doing um, continuing to be prepared continuing to have those good intentions and with time it will get easier um, yes Amy thank you for your comment this is a very very common um, obstacle so I'm so glad that it, that it uh, has come up um, so another thing I want to touch on is the, um, the idea of noticing and naming, which is just another way to kind of refer to mindfulness. Um, and that is ultimately, how can you change something if you're not even aware that it's happening? So the progress here is that you are becoming more aware of your challenging times of day. And that is really good intel to have. If you don't know that things tend to, you know, to snowball in the evening, then how can you do anything differently? Um, so working on noticing and naming or being more mindful in the moment is gonna be a really important step here. Um, and then once you have kind of the wherewithal to say, hey, I see what's happening here, then trying to take a step back and seeing, you know, trying to assess what do I wanna do? So say you're standing at the microwave and you're heating up dinner and you notice yourself getting tempted by the pizza saying, huh, okay, I noticed that that pizza is becoming a lot more enticing to me. Um, is it worth it to me? I know that I'm going to enjoy the food that I prepared, that I'm heating up, that's going to be ready in 90 seconds. Um, why is it that all of a sudden this pizza is becoming so enticing? Am I maybe tired and worn down so, you know, my willpower kind of uh, stores are depleted? Did I maybe let myself get too hungry in between meals and now it's harder for me to make sound decisions? And then ultimately, what should I do right now? Um, I do want to note that this is definitely easier said than done. So, um, so do, you know, be, uh, be patient with yourself, I guess is what I, what I want to say. Um, but that moment of reflection can really be the difference between like, whoops, that got away from me, and okay, what am I going to decide to do? Um, and then a couple of other helpful things that I wanted to touch on. Obviously, it's a lot harder to stick to your plan when you get too hungry. I think we have all been hangry from time to time. If you don't think you have, ask your significant other. I bet he or she will tell you otherwise. Um, but oftentimes when you're super hungry, you just stop caring about your goals. The primary thing that you're concerned about is getting more food into this mouth. Like, I don't care what it is. I don't care what's like my, my big picture importance. I care about like not being hungry anymore. Um, so one thing you can do is take notice of the time between lunch and dinner and your level of hunger. Maybe even kind of journalist or jot it down and take notice of like, oh, you know what? It's, it's been five hours. Like, of course I'm getting hungry and, you know, more vulnerable at dinner. Um, so in that case, could you have a snack to kind of tide you over, take the edge off and help keep that rational brain kind of intact um, to prevent that unexpected twist? And then eating slowly as well, which is something that I say time and time again, and I know I sound like a broken record, but it really is important. And even if you're eating something that was not your intention, 
that's okay. You can eat that slowly as well. And with that, I mean, when you notice that you're doing it, put that food down, chew that bite, really enjoy it, try to taste the flavors, try to savor it, swallow, maybe take a sip of water, and then decide if you want another bite. So it not only um, helps you be aware of what's going on and might stop you short and be like, oh, somehow I'm eating pizza instead of the meal that I left in the microwave. Um, but it also helps you become more aware of when you are no longer full or when you've stopped enjoying what you're eating. Um, and then lastly, I touched on this a little bit, but be kind to yourself. You are human and you are in the midst of making some amazing changes to your life, but you're not expected to be perfect. And a slip up or an evening not going according to plan does not mean that you're a failure. It's just data to assess what, you know, what happened and figure out what to do a little bit differently the next time to get, you know, closer to your desired outcome. So um, if that's an issue that you have been having um, as well, where you kind of have this great plan for the day and you find that towards the later, later end of the day, it doesn't, uh, you know, things don't go exactly as you were planning, hopefully this uh, helped give you some tips of how to take steps towards improving that. Um, another question, and this, again, I'm reiterating a little bit because we had kind of a lengthy conversation around this, but um, I think that the ultimate kind of question and answer here is very important and relatable. And that is, I'm working with a friend who is going through a super busy time in his life right now. And yes, this person is a guy, but the same thing applies to women, so just dismiss that. Um, he's super, super busy. He barely has time to eat. He doesn't have time to prep. All that he can really make work right now is like the simple grab and go options. And he was even having a hard time still doing that, you know, as we went over a grocery list of what to buy, how to put his meals together in ways that basically required no prep. Everything was, you know, pre-cooked or, you know, for convenience sake. Um, and he said something today in our conversation that I thought was really powerful. And that was that he had to make the mindset shift to think of food as fuel right now. And I just think that was such a good point because at some point, something has to give. And he has decided, like many of you have decided, to start prioritizing your nutrition despite whatever circumstances you're going through. So right now, what he's sacrificing is taste for convenience. All right, the meals that he's making, you know, we're talking about like take a hunk out of rotisserie chicken, eat a bagel, and you know, try to shove a handful of spinach in your mouth. Like we're talking like as like bare bones and basic and simple and easy and fast as possible. Um, so what, what has to sacrifice for him right now is the, is the taste of his meals because he needs the convenience. That's more important to him right now. And I think that's a point that a lot of people need to hear is that there's always a give and take that you can make healthy foods taste incredible. There's no denying that. Some of the best meals that I've ever had have been, you know, very, very whole foods, healthy, you know, well balanced, that sort of thing. But that does take some added time. And if you, like the friend I'm referring to, don't have the luxury of time right now, then you might need to temporarily sacrifice the taste of your foods. Um, but you need to figure out how to make this work for your life right now. Is there may never be a time that you can sit down and make these gourmet meals. There's never going to be the perfect time. Um, so, so you have to figure out how it's going to work. Um, so if you're saying, I don't have time to make fancy meals, but I hate the way my meals taste as is, it sounds like you're trying to give yourself an excuse to not make a change. And that's fine. You don't have to make a change. You never have to do anything. But this is something that you're saying is important to you. So, so what's it going to be? Um, are you going to find the time to make your healthy meals taste great? Or are you going to, you know, kind of tolerate bland tasting meals for the sake of time and convenience? And I'm not saying that you can't make tasty meals quickly. I'm just trying to highlight that there's going to be a give and take. And 
sometimes you can't have it all and you have to figure out what to do. You know, in a perfect world, yes, you would have the ability to make delicious, balanced, healthy meals all the time and you know, you basically have it all. But sometimes, sometimes you don't. Sometimes life just isn't like that. Um, do you want to eat fast food because it tastes good and it's convenient? Fine. But you're sacrificing health. Do you want to eat healthy food that tastes eh? Fine. But you're sacrificing that taste. Or do you want to eat healthy food that tastes amazing? Great. But you're sacrificing the time. So I just want to kind of highlight that this is reality sometimes. That, you know, I'm not telling you that you should go through your whole life like this. That, you know, that you should just choke down meals that you're not enjoying. But I'm just saying that life has these ebbs and flows. Like this friend that I'm working with is in an especially, especially, an especially busy time in his life. And during those times, something has to give. And it's up to you to figure out what. So I just wanted to highlight that if you're kind of feeling that way, if you're having a busy time and you're just kind of feeling fed up, like, you know, I'm not enjoying what I'm eating, but I don't have time to make it taste better. That kind of thing is, is just to kind of think about the, the ebbs and flows here and the give and take of, you know, you always have a choice and what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to kind of see food as fuel for the next little bit that you're trying to maximize? how you feel to get you through this busy time? Or are you gonna kind of revert back to maybe eating less healthy things because they taste better and they're faster? So again, that's not, I'm not talking long term here. I'm not telling you that you should be living this life that you, you know, hate everything you're eating. I'm just saying in the short term, when life is hectic, you need to think about that kind of give and take thing. Um, and then lastly, I have a workout related question. And that is, um, I was really sore after my workouts in the beginning, but now I'm not really. Have they stopped working? This is a great question that I'm sure, again, a lot of people can relate to. Um, and is especially hitting close to home for me today because I am very, very sore. And like not in a very good way, which is something that I'm gonna get into. So we often associate uh, the soreness, the delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS, we often um, associate that soreness with um, an effective workout, but it's not really a good indicator of that. And what this soreness seems to be is related to the micro tears in your muscle after intense activity. So one thing to note is that this soreness is often like the most severe or the most pronounced um, when you're doing a new or an unfamiliar exercise or a movement that you just haven't done either ever or in a long time. Um, so basically what that boils down to is generally you're going to be more sore after doing an exercise that you haven't done in a while. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another is that this soreness is really variable um, in studies that have looked at, you know, kind of populations of exercisers and their level of soreness, there are significant variances from person to person. So what that means is I might get super sore after my workouts, even if I've been exercising for a long time, and you know the person next to me might be brand new to exercising and not feel very sore at all. It doesn't mean that one of our workouts is more effective than the other. That's just a, an individual difference. So that's another thing to note. Um, and then a third thing is that soreness is often based on the muscle group. So some muscle groups get sore more often and more intensely than others. Um, so for example, my glutes, my butt gets super sore and other body parts like my biceps, like I could do curls all day and probably wouldn't feel them. So that's just kind of an individual difference in my body. It doesn't mean that my leg workout is better than my arm workout. That's just kind of a general difference in, in how my body reacts. Um, Additionally, being sore is you know, kind of normal and expected after intense activity. So if you're active on a regular basis, you will most likely get sore from time to time. And oftentimes when people see this is when, like I said, you introduce a new exercise or you change programs or you're just like doing something different. Um, so 
all of that being said, you can definitely be kind of too sore, which is how I'm feeling right now. That like, ideally I would just lay very stiff on the floor and not move. Like that's how sore I am. So I'm like, I put off going to the bathroom because sitting down is such a thing. I can't bend down to my shoes. Like this is not good sore. Um, and I think that's what, uh, that's, that is my point here is that, um, when you work out, ultimately you want to feel better than, and you want to feel better afterwards than you did before. You want to feel energized. You want to feel accomplished. You want to feel strong. You want to feel proud. You don't want to feel like you've been beat down after every workout. And I think that's something that's kind of been perpetuated by the internet and by, uh, shows like The Biggest Loser and stuff like that is that, you know, kind of no pain, no gain, um, you know, soreness is your muscles crying, that sort of thing, that it makes it seem like unless you are miserably sore after every workout, like you're not working hard enough. And that's just not true, like that's BS. Um, the, your level of soreness is not a good indicator of the quality or the efficiency of your workout. Um, so, for the reasons that I mentioned above, you're generally more sore after new exercises. Your level of soreness can depend on body part, can depend on just your, you know, kind of genetics. Um, it does not mean that your workout is ineffective. And actually, trying to sort of chase that soreness can be a bad thing because it can lead you to over-exercise or do, you know, exercise more intensely or with more volume, so more sets, more reps. Um, then is really good for you. And then it can also impact your form. So like I said, my lower body is very sore today. When I try to sit down, it is not a pretty, pretty sit down. It's like grab onto a wall for support, ease myself down. If I were to try to do squats right now, they wouldn't be safe or efficient or healthy. Um, so when you are kind of habitually day after day, really sore, that can actually impact the form that you use in your exercises um, and and can negatively impact that and make you you know use movement patterns that aren't ideal that aren't safe things like that um, and then lastly it can actually kind of demotivate you is that if you wake up in the morning and you have a hard time getting out of bed because you're so sore you're gonna be less inclined to go hit the gym right off and that's exactly how I'm feeling now today is my rest day I don't even know if I'm gonna make it to yoga I'm so sore um, but already I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to work out tomorrow? Like that's not a good way to feel. Um, so oftentimes that, you know, that level of excessive soreness can mean that you're potentially pushing too hard. If you're feeling that level of soreness and beat downness on a very regular basis, that's probably indicative of needing to, to cool a little bit, needing to pump the brakes. Um, so to reiterate your level of soreness, um, or your lack thereof, as in the case of this question, does not determine the effectiveness of your workout. Um, which may be leaving me with the question of, then what does? If, you know, if my soreness doesn't tell me if my workouts are working, then how do I know? Um, so that's where, you know, your progress does. Are you stronger, faster, more flexible, leaner? Are your measurements changing? Are you more cardiovascularly fit? As in, has your resting heart rate gone down? Um, you know, can you run faster or longer? Can you go up more stairs without getting winded? Um, then your workouts have been effective regardless of your soreness. Um, so to, to circle back and, uh, and simply answer that question, just because you are no longer sore from your workouts does not mean that they stopped working. So that brings me to the end of the questions for this week. I thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, questions feel free to ask in the group throughout the week and I will get back to you both in the group and then I'll kind of reiterate and probably elaborate in the Q&A. Um, if it's something private that you'd rather remain anonymous, feel free to email me. And I, uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you have a great weekend.